Containing the series of weekly contest 291, here comes the third question of the contest, which is K divisible element subarray. Here in this question, we are given an array of elements and two separate integers K and P. What do we need to do? We need to identify the number of distinct subarrays that have at most K elements divisible by a P. So what do we need to identify? We need to identify distinct subarrays that have at most K elements divisible by a P. The question itself tells you what you need to do. You need to identify all the subarrays and then select those distinct subarrays that have k elements divisible by p. So we'll exactly follow the same steps as the question tells us to do and I'll be walking you through this example via the presentation so let's quickly hop onto it. Lead code double two six one k divisible elements subarray. This is a medium level question on lead code and I also feel the same. Also in case if you have any doubt understanding this question or if you want to ask anything from me in general, please feel free to ping on the telegram group or the discord server of coding decoded. Both the links are mentioned in the description below. Now let's get back to the same example. Here this is the subarray that is given to us. What do we need to do in the first go? We need to identify all the subarrays that exist with respect to this complete array. So let's get started and let's write the algo to generate all subarrays. So let's shoot for generating all subarrays starting from two. So the first one would be this, the second one would be two, three, the third one would be two, double, three, the fourth one would be two, th three, three, two, and the fifth one would be two, three, three, two, two. I s missed writing that up, but uh, it's better that I corrected it over here. Let's proceed ahead. Ne next, let's shoot for generating all these subarrays starting from this three. The first one would be three. The second one would be three, three, followed by double three, two, followed by double three, double two. So we have generated all subarrays starting from this three. Let's proceed ahead. Next, we are going to generate all subarrays starting from this three, which would be three, three, two, followed by three, two, two. Let's proceed ahead. Next, let's generate all subarrays starting from this two. So the first one would be two, followed by double two. Let's proceed ahead. Next, let's generate all subarrays starting from this two towards right, and that would there is only one such element which is two. Now comes the problem. The, we need to identify those subarrays wherein there are at most two elements that are divisible by two. So the p value of p was two, and the value of k was also two. So we are interested in identifying those subarrays that have at most two elements that are divisible by two. So let's walk through iterating over these subarrays and count those up. Here, uh, this is the valid subarray. It has only one element that is divisible by two. So let's mark is that a happy case. So I'm writing tick over here. Here again, let's mark it as a happy case. Here again, it's a happy case. Here again, you can see that there are two tools that are divisible by two. So this is the upper limit that we have reached. Going ahead, we have two double three double two. So there are three tools over here as a result of which this will not be part of our answer because the question tells us we have to identify those subarrays where at most two elements should be divisible by two. Here you can see there are three elements that are divisible by two. So let's skip this up. Let's proceed ahead. Next, it's a valid case. It's again 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 a valid case. Now you can see that there are so many answers, but the question also tells us to identify distinct subarrays. When you hear the word distinct, what, sh what you should do? You should use hashing or hash sets kind of an approach. So what we can do, we can generate hashes out of for the corresponding to these subarrays. And then we can count those unique hash elements that are, that exist in that hash set to actually return the result. So let's count those up. So one would be this. Second one would be this, third one would be this, fourth one would be this, fifth one would be this, sixth one would be this, seventh one would be this, eighth one would be this. So this is a repetition of this particular one. Let's skip that. Ninth one is this, tenth one is this, and then we have, this is again a repetition, eleventh one is this. This is again a repetition, we are going to skip this up. So in total, we saw 11 subarrays. Moving ahead, let's quickly walk through the coding section and I'll exactly follow the same steps as I talked in the presentation. Here I've created a set in order to remove duplicate cases. Uh, going ahead, I have written a for loop so as to generate all possible subarrays. This I loop will identify the starting point of my each subarray. So I have written i equals to zero, i is less than nums dot length, i plus plus, 
I initialize a counter variable so as to identify the number of uh, elements that are divisible by p uh, and I have created another loop that will act as my terminals element for my sub array current sub array and uh, let's check whether nums of j happens to be divisible by p if it is then I increment my count variable as soon as my count is greater than k I break it up because uh, we are not interested in identifying those uh, sub arrays which have count greater than k and once I'm done with this I simply append it to my answers sb string sb string will act as my key for removing duplication the current element into it and once I'm done with this I simply add it to my set the set that I have generated in order to identify all sub arrays so once I'm out of these two loops let's submit this up awesome uh, it's 40 percent faster which is fine and uh, let's let me show, show you what all elements does exist in my set so it would be the same as I showed in the presentation so we have two three 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 two all all these if you go and check they are exactly same as I showed in the presentation and uh, you will also see that all of them are unique in nature there is no duplication by virtue of being a set uh, the time complexity of this approach is order of n square because you have used two loops to generate all possible sub arrays and the space complexity is also again of type of order of n square because uh, in the worst case n square uh, sub, sub arrays can would be generated with this let's conclude today's session i hope you really enjoyed it if you did please don't forget to like share and subscribe to the channel thanks for viewing it have a great day ahead and stay tuned for more updates on coding decoded i'll see you tomorrow with another fresh question but till then goodbye